Order at 10 after 3. And let's say, say a blessing real quick. Our Father, we just praise you for this day. God, thank you for keeping everybody safe, Lord, when, when the weather got bad. And God, we pray for those uh, who are not with us today, Lord, but they're with us last month, God. Just be with those families, Lord, and God, heal them through this uh, through all these times, Father. Father, we praise you for, for life. We praise you for everything, God. Thank you for bringing this group of people here, God, just to uh, God, just to lift up this, this nation, our tribe, Lord. And, and God, just be with our leaders and directors in the Cherokee Nation. Lord, continue to give them wisdom. And, and uh, God, we, we praise you for all these things. And God, just be with us today. And we thank you for all this. Amen. Amen. Uh, Shelly, you want to do some roll call? Yes, sir. Shelly Walking Stick. Aye. Brian Warner. Aye. Bill Anglin. Aye. Keith Austin. Here. Carla Buzzard. Here. Bill Bird. Aye. Sean Crittenden. Here. Mike Dobbins. Here. Frankie Hargis. Present. Wanda Hatfield. Aye. Frank Jordan. Here. Dick Light. Here. Mike Shambaugh. Here. Mary Baker Shaw. Here. Leo Smith. Here. Denise Taylor. Here. Victoria Vasquez. Honey. We do have a quorum. Thank you, Shelly. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of January 16, 2018? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Down to reports. Uh, Diane Kelly is not able to be with us. She's at a conference right now, but in her place, we got Mr. Daryl Legg is filling in. Daryl, it's good to have you. Good to see you. All right. Good to see you. You have our report, and uh, Diane is in a uh, conference call with the uh, Department of Labor right now at Talking Leaves Job Corps. Um, talking about Talking Leaves, we've had a huge recruitment campaign. Uh, we've um, got some billboards, yard signs, newspaper ads. Uh, the um, employment training counselors have actually jumped in and started helping recruiting a little bit, so we look to have the center full by March 1st. Um, Groundhog Day was also job shadow day and it went over real well we had students from talking leaves the business technology class um, was able to come through all of our departments and uh, sit around and do some job shadowing to see what it was like to uh, work in those uh, prospective fields that they are wanting to go into uh, principal chief signed a proclamation um, also our new manager that we've hired is uh, marshall white for the uh, dislocate, uh, dislocated worker, the disability initiative grant that we got through Brenda Fitzgerald's shop. Um, so she is uh, on board and we've got a couple more counselors to hire for that grant. Um, the re-entry grant, I did my, uh, I got one more interview tomorrow and I will have both positions filled for that as well. Um, the, um, Diane Kelly said to wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she wants me to go present, but she gives, tells me exactly what to say, so I just want you to know. <laughs> Don't say anything wrong, it's her fault. But she does, she wishes everybody a happy Valentine's Day. And if y'all have any questions, I will right. do my best. Yeah. I have one question in regards to building trades. Uh, is there sheetrock? In the, do you know what all they're teaching, and specifically, are they teaching hanging sheetrock? I know that they used to be a lot more in depth than what they are now. I think now they're being utilized for a lot of housing projects such as wheelchair ramps, the things that the housing authority don't have time to do. Uh, so there is a curriculum. Uh, I don't know exactly. I, I can't tell you for certain what they're actually going in and teaching in the classroom. Any other questions for Daryl? Good no report. questions like that ever again. <laughs> but really, really, there, there was more of a curriculum set up uh, of, of teaching different things. But I think as far as the need goes, they were, it was really utilizing them to help out some okay, of the housing, so. housing projects. I know, I know they have gotten some wheelchair ramps done yes. that are necessary, and we do appreciate that. You so. bet. You bet. Thank you. All right. Say Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Daryl. Uh, next, Executive Director's Report, Mr. Vaughn Etheridge. 
Good afternoon. Hello. Uh, I understand there may be some questions for us, but we, we've got a pretty lengthy report, and, and uh, I'll get into it. Uh, and then feel free to stop me at any time. Uh, and, uh, you know, regarding the questions, we'll, we'll try to answer those toward the end, uh, if that's okay, uh, on, on other matters. On, uh, but uh, Verna is unable to be here, um, so you have her report and uh, have it here. Uh, hard copy if you don't. If, is there any questions regarding Verna's report? Actually, our manager's meeting is the 20th, which is next week, and uh, she'll have all this stuff, so she's ahead of me. Uh, but anyway, I do have a report. Any questions for Verna? Uh, uh, she's right, got, well, she has ahead. one in uh, St. Francis in intensive care. Uh, and uh, she's taking care of that matter, just to, just to let you know. So, okay, I'm gonna move on to our report. Okay. Uh, we are having a retirement uh, get together and for Dr. Sly uh, on the uh, February 27th. Uh, we're gonna have it in the tribal services from two to four. So I know um, all of you know Dr. Sly. And, Anyway, uh, we give her ample time to come back. And she's not going to, so <laughs> she's enjoying retirement. Says she's probably busier now than she was when she was working, but uh, she's enjoying her uh, children and grandchildren. So anyway, but we're going to have that. Just letting you know. Hey, Rob, you know Rob, where's that at? Tribal Services Comforter. Where's that I'm at? Here. Here. Education wing. As you come in the door there. Education wing. Yeah. Okay, uh, valedictorian salutatorian. We talked about this last uh, spring, and uh, with our ESSA meetings that we had with our schools, we made them aware of it. Uh, that uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, there uh, I, there was numbers that uh, you know were just in a sense abusing uh, because. Uh, we had one district with 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 eight uh, valedictorians and, and so forth. So we made them aware that uh, there, there's you know it's going to be reduced next year and uh, they'll be paid for the sum for one valedictorian uh, provided you have uh, ones that qualify that that have that are Cherokee and uh, uh, and then one salutatorian. Now if you have multiples, then we'll go ahead and and uh, divide that up, disperse. That of that sum, however you like, we would like for it to be dispersed. And so, anyway, we had, uh, and we've we've written a letter. Uh, we sent it certified mail uh, to 145 schools uh, because it basically is uh, contiguous. And uh, so, anyway, uh, we we got back from the 145 all but five uh, cards. Uh, we also sent emails, uh, so they're aware of it. Since it's happened, which we sent that in January, we've received four phone calls. Uh, and basically the phone calls have been, I have two valedictorians and, and one salutatorian. Uh, if I give the sum for the valedictorians that you've got here and, and then the sum for the salutatorian, the salutatorian is going to make more than the valedictorian. We told them we'll allow you to disperse of that how you see fit. And so naturally, they're going to fix it out where it's, where it's proper and, and uh, where the valedictorians are rewarded just a little bit more than the salutatorian. So anyway, there, uh, uh, you have any questions toward that? Yeah, go ahead, Keith. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, okay. Councilman Austin, go ahead. Um, so is it the same exact amount that's going to each school? Well, if they have, they have to have now a valedictorian and salutatorian, it would be the same amount. If they have one valedictorian, one salutatorian, they're going to get $1,750. Okay. So is it not punishing large students who attend large schools? A, 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 a small school may only have one, one, a large school has eight. I, I know my district has large schools, large population schools. Uh, does it not mean that those kids have less of a chance to get this? Well, yeah, I wouldn't. Mathematically speaking, yes, they would have less of a chance. Hmm. 
Well, that doesn't thrill me. Yeah. Okay. That's what it should be. Go ahead, uh, Councilman <coughs> Dobbs. Uh, Ron, the case where schools have multiple valedictorians, you mentioned eight. Uh, I've communicated with some school districts, and they have a formula combining their GPA and an ACT score to arrive at that ultimate valedictorian. Has that been, is that common discussion at all to just to bring in the ACT to determine if you want a valedictorian? Right. There, there, there have been some that, that, that do that, just as you as you mentioned right there, and one in your district, yeah. in fact. Uh, but uh, they, uh, you know, I mean, it, the superintendents, I mean, to be quite candid, I mean, they, it, that's the easy road. I mean, I, I don't know how much money we have. If we've got plenty of money, then fine, let's give them all, you know. But, I mean, I'm, that's just, that's, you know, I'm told how much we have, okay, and what we're to do. And so we have a budget, and so we stay within the budget. <laughs> Are there questions? That's within our budget, and yes, it's within our policy, correct? That's correct. Hey, Councilman Buzzer? Well, I tend to agree with Councilor Austin over there that I think that's something we probably need to think about. If you go back and look at these scholarships that we give out, freshmen get, what, 1,294? And how many don't complete that freshman year and they get all that money? I know before we have lost a million dollars because they didn't complete the, the courses. And now we're punishing kids that exhale in high school because of that. I'm, there's something not balancing out here as far as I'm concerned. We're giving these kids to go to college of freshmen these scholarships. I don't know what percent of them finish the freshman year, but then we lose a million dollars. We need to do something. These kids have tried and tried in high school, and now we're cutting them out. I agree with Councilor Austin. Awesome. It's not fair for those kids to do that. Councilor Warner. Thank you. I, uh, you know, fair is fair. Uh, but now you, you start stepping off into a land of those people that run those schools, it's up to them to put forth this stuff because here's another question you can look at because a lot of these schools, somebody that's in concurrent enrollment may not get to be the valedictorian because they take concurrent enrollment classes, you know what I mean? So then I think it's kind of you go back, instead of us always looking I mean, we, I can be a part of that solution for them, like Councillor Dobbins said, and, you know, about putting that ACT in there and stuff, but then ultimately it's up to them. It's their decision. And uh, I like the candid answer that Mr. Etheridge gets. I mean, it's kind of the easy way out if I pick the eight, you know. I mean, then I don't have to sit there and pinpoint one ultimate individual. I went to school with, there was 130 of us, and, uh, you know, I... I tried to whip every one of them's tail every day in class, you know, but at the end of it, I graduated 10th, but I could sit there and tell you how I was better than the nine that was above me, but I still didn't get valedictorian, you know what I mean? But, I mean, and, I, and I, I'm like Harley, I agree that I'd like to give them all some money somewhere, but you stepping off into somebody else's territory of telling them how they want, need to do it. We have our policy set, I think, um, you know, unless we want to appropriate more money, and stuff like that because there's other things that they can all sit there and say because I know some personal instances where kids that went to college took college classes and it happens now they're not able to be valedictorian because uh, they're not taking the classes the other ones were taking so that's all I have to thank you that's good work uh, Councilwoman Shaw Councilwoman Shaw Yes. Hey, uh, can you put your phone on mute? Yes, I'm okay. sorry. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, Councilman Lake. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman, and Ron and Jennifer. I may step off in it again, but I, I do that from time to time. But I always try to get as much funding out there as possible, especially to our kids, your kids. And, but I, I'd like to hear kind of a little bit of a round robin from my educator 
folks on this on this committee on this board on the council on what they think about uh, like there's eight people eligible in one school or something when I was a kid they had one they had one valedictorian one salutatorian man that was it I don't know that of course I went to small schools maybe the bigger schools were different but if we if we have Cherokee kids and, and we can help them with some funding I'm all for it but you've got a budget and you just mentioned that and so is, is this putting you over your budget is that what you're telling us or what I'm just asking well she she can answer that better than I can but I mean we have you know specific dollars set aside you know for or you know our, our various uh, you know things that, that we uh, uh, give our students I mean our, our programs and, and uh, yeah I mean that's you know uh, it, it would yeah it would affect our budget sure would so what are, what are you asking us to do not I'm just letting you know that we have sent a letter out uh, informing all the school districts 145 that being contiguous as well as the 88 on the inside that uh, that we are uh, you know gonna send out I mean if they have a valedictorian and salutatorium then they will have seventeen hundred and fifty dollars coming those two students uh, if they if they have more than that then it's up to them to determine how the money is dispersed uh, so really just informing you that that's what we're doing so you'll send is it 1750 each for each well it would be it would be a thousand for the valedictorian and 750 for the salutatorian so that that's all any one school is going to right. get period that's, that's, that's correct yeah so councilman thank you uh councilman anglin yeah thank you councilman uh ron uh also could that not uh, go back to what Dick said uh, earlier that some of these schools may not have a Cherokee receiving that scholarship right. uh, or the valedictorian or salutatorian. Right. So could that money? I mean, are we draining the pot? Or I mean, because there's there's gonna be a lot of schools that won't have those too. You know? No, I don't. Uh, the, the years that I've been here, mm -hmm. the previous years, everyone had one. I mean, well, I know it's last based, year it's was based on how they do it year, because yeah. if they have 4.0 mm -hmm. it's considered a valedictorian and uh, so anyway and that's uh, there's gonna be some 4.0s you know uh, and in fact uh, the school I was talking about in your district uh, had uh, uh, 28 valedictorians mm -hmm. yeah. eight of them were Cherokee Smart kids. <laughs> Smart, yeah. Yeah. So. That's all I have. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Councilman. Uh, Councilman Shambaugh. Okay. Um, I have a little different question. Um, it's about scholarship money. Um, the money that we give to our students, what's, what do they max out on hours as far as, you know, you'll give them money if they stay in, in college and they keep making their grades and, you know, they're soft, freshman, sophomore, junior. How many hours does that go to to they're cut off? We do 10 semesters or 140 hours, whichever comes first. Okay. Well, I had a situation, <clears throat> I had a phone call of a young lady in college. Um, she surpassed her hours, um, but also her situation, she has a double major. Um, she works uh, a job while she goes to college. She's received $2,000 from Cherokee Nation every semester. Well, she's went over her 140 hours, but also she took 17 hours when she was uh, in high school. So I guess that gets tacked onto that too. But to me, uh, and I know there's rules and you follow the rules, but um, you know, you got a person who is getting, this is their last semester to graduate. Um, they've uh, got a double major, you know, they haven't not made their grades. You know, they've, they've went over a little bit because of what they took in high school as a senior. Um, and now they're being penalized by not getting the two thousand dollars. I think, you know, certain uh, things like that should be, to be taken into account. And I know there's rules; you have to follow the rules. But also, you have a person who is going to graduate with a double major, uh, could wants to come back into the Cherokee Nation as a nurse. Uh, so, you know, I think there are instances out there where you know those things need to be looked at. 
and if everything's etched in stone, um, you know, you're almost penalizing somebody for being an overachiever in high school and taking those hours. Uh, it's, it, it seems to me like so, especially when this person is graduating this year uh, with a double major. So, um, I wish you could. Uh, I wish you would relook at that. I don't know if your if your rules allow you to do so, but I can give you a name and I can give you a number, and they can. I'm sure you've already been contacted about it. But uh, to me, these are the kind of people that I think we need to. Uh, you know, they need to be rewarded. Uh, especially for them working outside of school and, and still getting money from us, but them still carrying a job all through college and paying their way, you know, the rest of their way by working. So um, I just hate to see somebody get penalized for being an overachiever in high school and taking all these college hours, and then later on it comes to affect whether they get money or not from Cherokee Nation. Catchman Shambaugh, okay. uh, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd recommend that if, if you're wanting to pursue this, you could uh, amend the legislation. And if you can lobby enough of uh, this body, then it's something you can move forward with. So, uh, Councilman Crittenden. Yes, I was just going to say I appreciate Ron and Jennifer and the crew. Uh, I run into this with a lot of departments. They're given an amount of money, and their job's to make the most out of it. So I appreciate what you're doing. Uh, you know, unlike Brian, I didn't have a snowball's chance of being a valedictorian. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, and there's always just one at Stillwell usually, and well, there's an exception. But uh, <laughs> but my my brain just wants to ask, um, how much was it last year that what we paid out? Did you already say that? I don't recall the exact payout. I know that we had right at 185 total valedictorian salutatorians and so each year just like the undergrad scholarship it continues to grow 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 so we're looking at how do we catch that that's that's what I'd like to know is kind of the dollar figure to to sustain what we've been doing because I keep going back my brain keeps going back to some of these things uh, is this where we want to start the cutting and it's not Ron's fault he's getting a bunch of money but as a the big picture, is this where we want to start cutting it? The valedictorians, the money, or do we want to put some more to it? You know, because it don't take probably a blind guy could could see that we're spending money at different places, good places, but far less important in my mind than than 4.0 people. You know, they're going somewhere, and uh, but. I'd like to know what money we would need to sustain what we were doing because I, I don't think this is the place to start the cutting. Um, you know, maybe American Airlines, maybe, but not here. Yeah. That's a good comments, Councilman. The, uh, you know, coming from a, a, a large school district that I've, I've worked in is the, uh, a lot of, and Ron could attest to this being a superintendent, um, a lot of times you have board members or someone that has a kid that's a senior and they're competing with that valedictorian and they're so close. So, well, let's just give both of them the valedictorian award. And then you open up a can of worms up and then next year you got to continue to to do that. And there's some school districts have, they've loosened, they've, they've loosened up and they've allowed multiple salutatorians and valedictorians because of just trying to try, trying to keep the community happy, versus uh, awarding one person because of their hard work, you know. And so, uh, different districts they 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 got those different philosophies, you know. And so, uh, but I don't think Cherokee Nation is on the school's radar for them trying to take advantage over our tribe. I don't I don't see that. We're not. Cherokee Nation isn't on the school's radar as far as where we're going to take advantage of Cherokee Nation and we're going to get as many valedictorians and salutatorians as we can. Uh, that's, that's not the case. It's more or less a superintendent trying to keep his job and keep the community happy within the school district. Is, is that right, Ron? It's, I agree. Yeah. I mean, uh, and so, and, and yeah, it's, dig, it's digging into our pocket. Uh, we never want to be the ones that cut education. Which we, we want to be increasing it, uh, but uh, anyways, um, that's uh, 
I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll see how this year goes, Ron, and and uh, if and if you, you guys want to appropriate more money to that pod and continue to going down the road we've been going, then we can we can do that as well. So, um, and if you guys want to get legislation going, you guys are welcome to do that as well to set policies or a law on this vacatory and salutatory and program. Yes, Councilman. Could, could you add a something if we sustained it where you know like the 4.0 how many students graduated there with the 4.0 28 you said 20 yes so i mean and, and it was 4.0 or above you know they had an accelerated scale you know but then eight people got it so well, no that was <laughs> that was eight, eight that were cherokee you know eight, 28 in one school district 28 total valedictorians eight were cherokee so eight people got it yeah from there yeah. And the 20, they wasn't to Cherokee, so they didn't get it. Right, right. So um, I think that you could put in, let's say you had a school with uh, zero or maybe one 4.0 and one 3.5, then the school decides 4.0 wins. You know, now these ones with 4.0 all over the board. Yeah, that's a but I still don't, I, I still don't think that's enough to, to, so you're talking do away with back to valedictorian, salutatorian, but uh -oh. but set a GPA standard where you get the full amount. Then this no this. keep keep the valedictorian thing. It's a good thing. But if it comes up to these schools that that don't that have a 4.0 or whatever, the highest kid gets it. Now in these circumstances where there's you know, 4.0, there's no way to, if you got 4.0, you're 4.0, right? And there's, you know, breaking that tie, Yeah. you can't. But, uh, no, it's up to the school's discretion to break the tie. Um, but, uh, where do we go from here? Do we get that dollar figure what you guys would need? to sustain what we are doing? Or? Cassidy, I think they've already sent the letters out, mm -hmm. and they've, uh, <coughs> Uh, to the superintendents, um, just for our but it, 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 just for our information, can you guys get that those dollar amounts to us to see what that is? And like I said, we can <coughs> revisit this next year and um, redo it. Or again, there's still time left. If you guys are passionate about it, you guys can make make change at our next committee meeting. So, <coughs> Mr. Qualls, how do you do Sequoia High School? We have one of these. Do most of the subject. You guys are doing the right thing by appropriating the money. Your heart is all in the right spot, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, whereas you can't control what happens in schools. Those school districts are responsible for the tiebreakers, if you would. Uh, share with you. I have a niece that graduated from Fox High School in St. Louis. Uh, if I remember right, I think the valedictorian. Top 10 started at over 4.4 uh, But you've got weighted classes, you've got AP courses, and you know, you know, come into play on that. Yeah, a lot of, lot of variables <coughs> going to play there. Mr. Qualls, it seemed like I've been to the last few Sequoia High School graduations, <clears throat> and the valedictorian there, one went to Brown University, is that correct? Seemed like one got 240,000. Or full ride, and there's another got a full ride for went to somewhere out there in the east for like another two hundred thousand, and they got two thousand a year from us. So if you're a valedictorian, you pretty much get funding from other sources, correct? There are a lot of sources you can offer. I mean, even locally, at you've got a green and white scholarship you can apply for. Uh, and that one from Brown I know got like two hundred thousand because we introduced it. Scholarships to yeah. Okay. Well, this is something we need to look at, Ron. <coughs> um, yeah. And, and look, see how, you know, how passionate we're going to be about funding. Now, I hear, I hear what Mr. Qualls and Mr. Bird saying is that, you know, when a student is a valedictorian and you got 28 of them in a, in a school district, 
your, those 28 kids is going to have a good opportunity to get scar back to touring scholarships to whatever colleges that they're that they're going to. Uh, you know, it's just you know then again that's up to the school's discretion. But our program, our valedictorian program here at Cherokee Nation, you know, it digs into our pocket of you know giving into those valedictorians, and we hear what you guys are saying on that end as well. Uh, so it is something we're going to have to look at. <coughs> If we want to appropriate more funds, once you guys give us those numbers, yeah. and we might come back and, and revisit that. Okay. 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 Is there any other questions or comments about this? Uh, saying none. Okay. Ron, do you have any other agenda yes, items? Yes, plenty. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> uh, have a uh, public school appreciation day, uh, March second, and uh, of course it'll no change. Uh, having it to Hard Rock. Uh, actually uh, starts at 11 o'clock. Uh, registration uh, 10 o'clock, 10:30. We have 108 schools. It's like just like last year. Uh, do not know the actual sum yet. Well, uh, anyway, uh, so that's put that down for sure. Uh, always a good day. I mean, uh, everyone's got a smile on their face, mm -hmm. and so it's 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 a good time. Uh, ESSA. Uh, we have uh, uh, all the schools in, in our uh, 14 county area been sent letters from the, the state superintendent uh, once again. Uh, it, it involves around uh, Title VI and, and whether or not the district gets $40,000 or not. And of course, last year we, we met with, with all those. Uh, we have an earlier start this year. Uh, we're going to try to meet with them countywide as opposed to just four sites. Uh, last year we, we met in Pryor, uh, Kansas, Oklahoma, uh, Tahlequah, and Salso. Uh, this year we're going to try to go to the, each county and uh, bring in uh, the respective schools. We're going to try to make it more personable uh, and, and inquire, uh, you know, what their, their uh, Cherokee students are doing, you know, and how they're doing uh, percentage-wise versus the, uh, the rest of the population and so forth. So. So last year, we didn't have time to do that. This year, we're going to have time to do that. So anyway, we're working on a program. We'll send them that information that we ask of them uh, and allow them time to fill it out, and then we'll go meet. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, we're talking dependent districts. We're talking independent school districts. So anyway, that's forthcoming. Uh, any questions on that? Uh, we have... Uh, Impact aid uh, deadline was January, uh, and we had 37 schools. We have a new school or two that uh, that's trying to get some impact aid, and and, uh, um, and anyway, they're working at it and, and so forth. And so we have uh, written waivers for 37. That will be discussed in those ESSA meetings as well. So anyway, that uh, another uh, we have. Um, Camps, or, or camps coming up. Uh, just to let you know, uh, we're still having a camp uh, May 29th through June 1 uh, at No Water, at uh, Rogers State, and at Dwight Mission. June the 12th through the 15th, uh, Kansas, Oklahoma. I know we used to, hardly we'd have one at Jay, we'd, we'd, we'd bust those down if we yeah. need to, whatever. I mean, to, to Kansas. And then we have... Uh, July 22nd uh, through the 27th, we're having uh, the, our residential camp, but we're also at Heart of the Hills, but we're also having a youth day camp there. Uh, so we'll have both, and they'll be split up. I mean, they're going different directions. So uh, that uh, we're going we're gonna to try that this year. So anyway, that's our, our camps. Um, Trail of Tears. Um, um, Awards of excellence, you know, kind of an interesting thing. I, I uh, Speaker Bird was, was, was part of the inaugural on that, and I think uh, Dr. Morton's wife, uh, Patsy Morton, you know, got this thing kicked off, and and it's an award that, that basically you are giving uh, to these students, and uh, uh, we're, we're giving them to eighth graders and to, to twelfth graders. And anyway, uh, it started out being a banquet, 
and they brought kids in and the reason for it initially was to try to keep kids in school because they were graduating sometime in the eighth grade and saying, hey, that's it. You know, my, my parents maybe, they, that's when they quit, you know. I'll go ahead and go to work. And, but now, you know, I mean, that thing's uh, lasted all these years. Uh, the 22nd year, which is 2008 and 9, it, they kind of quit the banquet style and went to just the, the, the checks. For, for succeeding. Uh, and it's in areas that starts out in, in, in academics. I mean, a 3.5 is what's required to begin with. They have to have that and in the areas of art, uh, citizenship, civic organizations, uh, Cherokee cultural activities, uh, fine arts, uh, school clubs and organization, team sports, and STEM and agriculture. So they're out there with an opportunity to, uh, to, to to get, you know, to help finance, you know, their endeavors. So anyway, that's, uh, uh, we've had the last three years, we've had 305, 238, and 278 in the 14 the county area that's, that's put in uh, for these awards. So just letting you know that that's coming up. Deadline is March 1. So if you're out there and about, you know, in your respective areas, tell them, Tell them to get them in. Uh, it's, it's, it's counselors that need to be working on it. Two more things. Archery. Um, I just visited with Brian today. I, mean, I didn't realize this until he, until he told me we already had, you know, we have the, the, the range out here. And he has put it to use. Uh, we've had tournaments out here. And, and he's also, it, it's really, I can't believe how the sport has, has come. Now, it's not an Oklahoma Secondary School Activity Association sport yet. But I, I guarantee if they have another one, a new one come in, it's probably going to be that because, I mean, it's out there. It's, it's everywhere. And there, we've had 12 tournaments that we have participated in and been a part of um, in uh, five different counties uh, that's, that's doing it. Almost practically everyone's doing it. We have a couple coming up uh, that uh, a little bit later, even on the high school level. So, you know, it's a sport. It's something that, you know, it's a lifetime sport that they can take with them uh, here and there and later. And he's helping this next week uh, with uh, the uh, Department of Wildlife, which, which we've uh, partnered, and it's a great partnership uh, with their state tournament. And then we come back here and then we host that Oris tournament. Now, it kind of conflicts with state basketball tournament, but uh, once again, that's K-8 level, and they start in the fourth grade. So anyway, just letting you know about the archery. Uh, this last thing uh, that I have, and then we'll open it up for questions that you might have for me, uh, is Native Explorers. You, you want to know? Well, I hope I didn't tear my hole in my pants right there. <laughs> 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 that sounded like it. Uh, anyway, you want to know? You're clear. Uh, <laughs> what uh, uh, we've done with uh, some of our uh, MVT money. Uh, that, that is one thing we've really we've increased in numbers uh, are people that uh, that that do this and uh, anyway the native explorers they, uh, they they basically go on a fossil hunt and uh, they uh, uh, it, it's it's a good thing we we've gone from two to four and want to increase it to five the Chickasaws are doing five and they've been doing five for some time and I just think it's a great thing for our, for our people I mean. We're reaching out to them in so many areas uh, that uh, you know. I mean, I mean, we can all be proud of. And so, anyway, that's that's another one. And he's got statistic here showing where these these kids are going to college. And every one of these kids that they're for uh, are attending college somewhere. And I mean, not just any college too. I mean, they're so. Okay, questions for us that you might have. Yes, Councilman Crittenden. What was the nearest Adair County camp? What did I say? Uh, uh, yeah, well, no, that's not Adair County, is it? Uh, that, uh, uh, <laughs> that's uh, Sequoia County. Uh, let me see what we had. Uh, RSU, Kansas, we really don't have one in, in, in Adair County. I mean, we got one over here in Cherokee County, the heart of the hills, a youth camp and the, the older kids camp, the residential, and then one in Dwight Mission. So, 
Now, if you want us to think about looking at one in Adair County, we'll we'll think about it. But right now, you know, I mean, we, we probably need to go with what we have this year, but I can assure you we'll look at one if you think there's now, Bill, one to work. Bill's still campaigning to, to get one kind of in that area. Okay. And, and there's, as you know, a whole lot of yeah. little Cherokee kids. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's every district. Well, and, and I tell you what we can look at. We can look at busting. I mean, to, to either side, either the White Mission or over Tel. Hey. So, so if you want us to look at that. Will you get with me on that? Yeah, sure will. And, uh, sure will. Set up a time and a meet spot. Right, right. Sure will. Uh, just, would that be, you know, from a, from we, a school? We, or do what now? They could meet at a school and get on the well, bus. We'll work that out because we do that. And don't we do up there, Dick? And, you're, and know what? I mean, yeah, in that area. That we've attempted to. And Plus a little bit. It's been been difficult. Okay. I need to talk to you some more about it. Okay, and I know we do we do today coming to if you don't Kansas. Want your, no, well, I'll take it. Okay. Right. <laughs> <Be quiet>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any more? Yes, Councilman Hatfield. That one. Um, the residential uh, camp. Um, I know that services are at large students or are at uh, right, population. Right. Okay. Uh, who do what, who is in charge of that? Are you do we, we contact you? Mark. Mark. Yeah. Okay. We also have several uh, Ed counselors in the metro <coughs> area that are interested in volunteer. Would they talk with Mark? That okay. would like to volunteer for the camp. Uh, right. Right. Yeah. They need to contact. <coughs> and I will Mark tell Mark, and I'll just tell Mark contact you. Okay. And, and go from there. Okay. Let me note on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. 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 Any other questions for? Ron, saying none. Good report, Ron. Thank you. Um, Good job, Ron. Thank you. Old business, none pending. New oh, business, none again. pending. Go. Uh, sure. Oh, Mr. Qualls. Met Mr. Qualls. Come on up. Sorry, we uh, we, we skipped you. That's for that's for skipping me on the bench that game against Miami. <laughs> We appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get ready to head for the door. Well, good afternoon. You have the schedule of events that I sent to you as a report. Uh, if you have any questions on any of those items, I'll be happy to try to answer those. And I will, uh, there's been plenty of things that's happened since I sent that to you. One thing, great news for our immersion kids, uh, our Cherokee Immersion School has had two teams qualify for the state tournament in Shawnee. Seventh and eighth grade made it to the Oklahoma Vex IQ State Championships. Uh, in the fifth and sixth grade, new Galactic BOTS team members also made it to the state championship. Um, some of those team members we have uh, for the eighth grade, Co-captain Kelsey Morgan, co-captain Raymond Miller, Rihanna Six Killer, and Jackson Stone. And on the fifth and sixth grade team, uh, for team members, we have Autumn Collins, Isabel Miller, Alexis Snell, Newton Martin. We're real proud of the hard work and dedication that those kids have shown and demonstrated to be able to make it to the state tournament, which will be they were uh, this Friday and Saturday in Shawnee. Uh, Sequoia High School student count is 357. We had a few midterm graduates. Dorm count 61. Cherokee student count is 309, which is about 87% of the student body. Um, our science classes chipped in and did something I felt that was really nice. They, uh, made valentines and took those down to the veteran center to be distributed in celebration for uh, valentine's day our drama team finished third last weekend in the haskell tournament <clears throat> caitlin morgan or excuse me <clears throat> caitlin morton and michael lenneberg finished first in a dramatic duet caitlin wofford and michael lenneberg was first in a humorous duet Chance Chambers was first in standard oratory. Now, uh, this time of year, uh, 
Uh, as far as basketball and wrestling is concerned, everybody's getting excited about the playoffs and the pairings and the upcoming games. Tonight, we'll, we will be hosting one of the, probably one of the top games in girls basketball in this, this part of the state when our Lady Indians will play Adair at six o'clock. We're number two and they're number one. Uh, say a couple more things about our girls. Uh, they're on an 11 game winning streak. Uh, they beat Fort Gibson last Thursday night and Fort Gibson's number one in 4A. Um, they won the Lincoln Christian Tournament to start that win streak in January. And uh, tonight probably will be a barn burner for us. Uh, the boys, well, the boys have won 12 in a row now. So both teams are moving right along. Uh, they're ranked number five. They also beat Fort Gibson, uh, defeated them. And Fort Gibson's number three in boys. Uh, got a great boys team last week. And uh, our boys defeated Hilldale Saturday at the BOK Classic in Tulsa. Um, tonight will be senior recognition night beginning at 530 for our senior athletes and participants at Sequoia High School. And the girls game will follow at 6 o'clock. And upcoming this Saturday night, we have, uh, we're hosting district tournament play uh, against Westville. And then next week, Thursday through Saturday, 22nd through 24th, will be the first time ever that Sequoia High School has been a main regional site for the OSSAA in the playoffs. Uh, it's something that, uh, you know, we've always gone to other places and they do a great job of hosting and we've got some schools in the area that are lucky, fortunate to host every year and, and this year we're blessed to be able to host that event and that's, uh, uh, we're real excited about that. With that being said, I want to wish all of you people on the council and your home teams good luck for the playoffs. And happy Valentine's Day. <coughs> Mr. Qualls, we have a council meeting tonight at 6. And the girls game, uh, usually 6.30, so, they can sit, so it's at 6 o'clock, right? That's what's on the schedule. What you might do is have Marcus Crittman, you know, uh, maybe give a speech about 6 o'clock. <laughs> I'm going to try to get through the council meeting pretty quick. We moved our <coughs> veterans recognition 15 till 6. This is a recommendation from the chief. So I obliged him with that. I said, sure, because that usually takes up most of the time. I think we've got like eight business items. Then uh, Sean Slate, we'll just cut him off anyway. And, uh, but we'll be, I, I will be there as soon as I can. So let, let Marcus say a few words. That'll take 20 minutes. <laughs> You'll be fine, Councilor. <laughs> Thank you, Councilwoman Hatfield. Um, when is the language fair? Or is, I, I, I know you, I don't, in, uh, Norman, do you have, I don't think you have anything to do with it. I don't it. have that, that information Martha? yet, but oh, we, we go every year. Uh, I know your immersion school is. is yes. Yeah, so, I, the immersion school. Yes. Yes. Since okay. we have church have speakers. Yeah. I don't have those dates yet, but okay. I, I can get those for you. Okay, I, I'll, I'll be on the lookout because I know it's coming out. Okay. So it's really good. Right. Thank you. You're thank welcome. you, Chairman. All right, thank you. Um, any other questions, Mr. Qualls? Saying none. Down to old business, none pending. Uh, new business, none. Next meeting is tentatively set for March 12th, 3 p.m. Rob's here. And, and, and Rob Dogger is here. We have a motion and second to adjourn. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 aye.